because at that time in Baltimore, people are getting killed every 19 hours. By day two of the first ceasefire weekend, we were at 40 hours and nobody had been killed. So when I say we were like literally dancing in the streets, that's what was happening. The excitement was all over the air. People were screaming, happy ceasefire weekend. You know, people were saying the atmosphere felt different, right? And so my brother, um, my middle brother, was having an event in the neighborhood where we grew up. So we, we're pulling up to this event. We can see moon bounces and smell the barbecue and kids playing basketball and the adults trying to play the kids and getting their asses beat and <laughs> just like so much fun and so much life. So right as me and my kids are about to get out of the car and come to this event, I get a text message, my phone goes off. So I take a deep breath because during ceasefire weekend, I, found, I find out who gets killed before the media does. So the family gets the call and I get the call. So that I can reach out to the community and say, okay, we're gonna be in motion to go to this space and pour light and love into this murder location. So I'm kinda scared to look at my phone. But I go on and I look at it, I pull it out, and it's a text message. Somebody has been killed on Sergeant Street, we don't know their name. So I'm sitting in the car, I just bust out crying. And it's weird because my face is covered in tears and my heart is breaking and I feel the weight of the city's excitement in my chest. But I gotta make a choice, do I get out of this car and go ruin everybody's fun time that they're having right now? Or do I kinda enjoy community for a minute and then tell everybody? So I decide, I'm gonna get myself together, we're gonna go, have fun, talk to people, stay for like 20, 30 minutes, and before I leave, I'm gonna let everybody know that we lost somebody to violence, what time we're all gonna meet over there, if everybody can. I'm making a post on, so, post on social media so everybody can meet us over there. So when we get to the space on Sergeant Street, as we arrive, the fire department was just there, still washing the blood from the sidewalk. And the media was there ready to mic me, to have a conversation. So I'm still West Baltimore, and I'm like, what the fuck is happening right now? Y'all not gonna mic me at a time like this, when there's blood and water in the air, you can smell it. Like, we're not having a conversation. Cannot experience what's happening right now. So there was a female police officer who took me to the side before I went off and just told me about her trauma with her nephew being killed and her cousins and what we were doing this weekend meant a lot to so many people. So I got myself together, I walk up to the space, and this is when I realized that I was at the bridge for it. Because nobody would talk until I said So we get into the space and some community members tell us where the shooter came from. It came from around the corner, down the street, bent the corner, bam, 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 hit him up right here. Right, so we still see some blood in the space. The fire department had done their best to get everything up. They just couldn't get everything. So we blessing the space, we saging the whole neighborhood. It dawns on me that this shooter, I could just feel it in my chest, that as he was about to bend that corner, he could feel it in him, that he was about to make a final decision that he was not gonna be able to take back. But something in him felt like he had to do it, like he didn't have another choice or something. So I decided I'm gonna go this route by myself. I saged the whole route. And then it dawned on me, no, all of us need to walk this route that the shooter ran. All of us need to walk in his steps and send this man new choices. Let him know that different choices are for him. So we do all of that, we're in the space, and then suddenly this mom speaks up and she says, my name is Fred. My son was killed in May, and y'all came to the space where my son got killed. And that's how I found out about this work. So when I saw the call come out the night, I jumped out of my bed, I shared the post, I told everybody to meet me there or beat me there, and I came here to pour light and love into somebody else's child's face. His name is Kendall, by the way, he was killed on August 5th. And then she turns to Pam, and she says, I'm so sorry for your loss. 
And she says, I just want to share with you a poem that I wrote about losing my son, if it can do anything to help you through what you're going through. So all of us are now just standing there watching these women in this dimension that you only know about if you have lost your child to violence. So we didn't clap. We didn't amen. We just watched one mother bond with and comfort another. And no matter how much we didn't understand it, what we knew is that we were watching God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.